Joined now by Tyler Smith from thehoosier.com. Uh, Indiana basketball coming off of a very nice uh, win over Iowa, but a uh, few injuries that will be watched going forward. Of course, Xavier Johnson goes down late in the game. Malik Renew goes down very early in the game. Uh, and uh, getting Renew back is without doubt crucial to Indiana's the rest of their season, but not having Xavier Johnson would also be um, a, a hit for this team as they have been without him back and forth for multiple occasions. And it's played havoc with the offense. Um, but right now they're coming off of a win that, that they were able to gut out against uh, an Iowa team that charged back after Indiana had a 17 point first half lead that they just could not hold. Yeah, you're sitting there at that game and you're thinking this could be an absolute disaster. They're losing players. They lost a huge lead. And you're just sitting there thinking, you know, if they don't pull this win out, you know, what little maybe optimism that some fans had left would would probably go out the window if they were to lose that game. But thankfully, um, Leal steps up, cups, the freshman hits the big shot. They find a way to win. Uh, to keep some momentum going. Um, they got Penn State Saturday. Another guy we got to watch is uh, Kel Ware, who came back from injury and then was favoring his other leg in the game. Um, he was really struggling and, and really, really gutsy effort from him and the rest of the guys. So a uh, quick little turnaround here before the next game, as it often is. So definitely something to watch. The, the depth, the lack of depth of this team will surely be tested coming up here. Yeah, uh, going not mentioning uh, the fact that Kalel Ware, who had just returned from injury, and I was it. I don't know. Was that the same leg he came up gimpy on? I don't re recall. I don't think so. I think in, in the other time it was the ankle, and it looked like maybe he was cramping in the calf or lower leg. Um, I do. There were. Then that's a good sign. If it's cramping, that's just uh, yeah, muscle fatigue and and uh, get some fluids in there, yep. and, and something like that. But he played a hell of a game for and w w in a game that he couldn't come out. He had to be the guy. He had to stay in there and and keep on banging it. Yeah, he was huge. I mean, obviously the Hoosiers would love to have both guys, but the fact that you know they've had, um, you know, that's the. The joy of having two of them when uh, one is out, the other one can feast, and that's kind of what they've done. That what they've done this year, but hopefully here in the near future, uh, they get both guys back, keep them on the court because uh, it's just absolutely vital to success, especially if they want to win some games on the road, which they're going to have to do. Yeah, Mike Woodson said that uh, we needed him back in the worst way after the win over, and he was exactly right because there's just. Something, I mean, Malik Renu is is great in the paint. Don't get me wrong. He has great footwork and he's a good scorer, but he's not the defender that Kel Elware is. He's not the rim protector that Kel Elware is. I mean, when, when Kel Elware is in there, it's uh, he he changes he changes offenses. He changes their shots, he changes their attack, and uh, you can tell that they respect exactly the fact of him being in there and, and you look at the points scored in the paint of that game you know Iowa couldn't couldn't do jack squat yeah and it's so important not just the the total number of block shots but the altering shots which I wish there was a I wish they kept that stat more more in our minds um because a guy like that you know just altering looks when they do uh, drive into the paint and even if it's not you know again ending up in the box score as a block shot it changes the game i felt like many times this year if indiana is going to struggle guarding the three they should run guys off the three-point line more into where um, to make them try to beat them beat them down low but you got a team like iowa that can make a lot of threes and some crazy ones at that um, you cannot also have them scoring in the paint so to have that weapon down low uh, obviously incredibly important for the squad. Absolutely. And uh, getting that win, very important to stop a three game skid by Indiana in big 10 play. And now they will play another game at home against Penn state in which uh, this is the only game in their final 13 games on the schedule that they at back going back to that point that they were favored there were projected to be favored to win they were not favored to win the game against Iowa but they did 
I would imagine that they were going to be favored against Penn State regardless, and the win against Iowa would have changed that. But it's that's going to be dependent upon who is able to play, and they're not going to know that up right up until game time because it's going to be an injury report that comes out that has Xavier Johnson questionable at at best, and the same for. Uh, Malik Renew. They're go- he's got. They're both going to be on that list. I-, I would almost virtually guarantee it. Yeah, and I could see them multiple guys being on the old questionable list for many games uh, here in the future. It's kind of been a, a staple of the season, unfortunately. But you know, under normal circumstances, I would say Indiana is a pretty good bet to win this game at home. But with those concerns, it's still going to be a challenge. Penn State just won a game at Rutgers this week. I still don't know how Indiana didn't win at Rutgers earlier this year, but uh, Penn State also has beaten Wisconsin at home uh, mid-January. They are just one and four in true road games. So I think, you know, Indiana's got that advantage, even though they just won uh, at Rutgers. But um, it's a game Indiana needs to get, just like they they survived the Iowa game. This is one that if you feel like if they can just survive it, find a way, injuries or not, to come out on the on top, then – um, you start to get, you start to see at least a little bit of a path of of some intrigue the rest of the season if they can survive this one. Well, they don't have to. They they had they can they have to do more than survive. They have to win this game. There, there's no question. Not because I'm talking of potential NCAA tournament. They're not going to the NCAA tournament. I, I mean, I don't want to be na- negative Nancy or whatever, but I, I'm not going to sit there and pretend this team has a shot to go to the NCAA tournament when they don't. That's not going to happen. That ship sailed. Uh, their metrics suck. They have. They are so far off the radar. They they wouldn't be seen if they were shot out of a rocket now. But the NIT is the only thing that they have uh, in addition to the Big Ten tournament. Uh, but they have to win more games than they're projected to win to get to the NCAA tournament in my or in NIT in my estimation. Well, hey, if you go back to that uh, that old Ken Palm thing, it was uh, they predicted one win and uh, and thirteen. They, they did end up getting those three in that first little section of games that uh, Ken Palm had won. So, still not good enough. Um, obviously, the Ken Palm rating is not what you're trying to beat. You're trying to actually make noise and, and be a tournament team. But yeah, they they got to take care of home court uh, the rest of the way for anyone that's holding out any hope for any postseason ball at all. Um, they're going to have to win every home game left and then uh, find a way to win a couple on the road. Um, maybe Penn State is one of those, but that won't be easy because they beat Wisconsin there. So no game is easy for the squad. They got to find a way. The great story, though, Anthony Lill, who is now, I believe, for the season, he's nine for 12 from the field for the season. So hopefully this is a game that propels him to shooting more. They need to they did run a play for him at one point, getting him off a screen. I want to see more of that. With these injuries, okay, here's let me stop you right there. So many times we see and hear and say they ran a screen for I was going to say X, but that was just as in X, Y, and Z. Uh, they ran a screen for McKenzie for McKenzie, or they ran a screen for um Anthony, and we never see it again. Yeah, how many why is it that we say that over and over that they do things in singular terms? especially successful things, mm-hmm. especially the things that they need to be doing, but they're not. And I don't get that. Yeah. It's like, yeah. it's, it's like they come in, they have got a play driven or written, uh, uh, drawn up off the coming out of a timeout. And that's it. That's all that that plays for and everything else. Just go back to doing nothing yeah. in, in a sense. And, and I, 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 I personally do not understand that. Yeah, I agree. I've been uh, I've been posting this online for quite a while that I feel like this has gone back so many years through so many coaches, even that it's like the off ball movement for this program has been lacking compared to other programs for I don't know how long. And when they do have something successful and the reason we notice it the most is because usually they knock down that shot and Baco, Leo, somebody knocks down a shot out of a nice play. You don't have to do the same play the very next time down the floor, but if you give it a couple couple turns, you know the defense is not going to react that quickly, and you need to have counteractions. So if they if they 
figure out that play is coming and they switch the screen up top. You got a guy slipping or an additional screen. You know, you have second and third options uh, within your sets. So I would love to see more off ball movement. And, you know, because that goes back to his comments, too, about we shoot a lot of threes at practice. Well, everybody does. But is your offense tailored to getting better looks than what you've been getting more in the flow of the offense? And are your guys ready to shoot? Because a lot of times they don't look, appear ready to shoot. Hopefully it's a good sign from Leal and Mbako moving forward. Um, Indiana, one good new piece of news. They've moved out of the 90s of Ken Palm, and they are now the 88th ranked Ken Palm team, which is a move up because if they beat Penn State, they're going to move up again, uh, which will is a positive sign for, for this team at least. Yeah, I mean, anything anything positive at this point, they, they need to just uh, get hot here at some point um, if it's if anything's possible at all. And, you know, that game at Illinois, um, you know, there in Champaign, not hitting a single three, but being so close, that just really, really hurt when they had an opportunity to get that big win, which would have at least, again, made things interesting the rest of the way if they could pull out, pull that one out or the Kansas game out. So. <laughs> You know, winning it at Mackey is an incredibly difficult task. I know Northwestern almost did it, but different different situation when Indiana's there. So you're running out of options for the big wins, uh, especially any games on the road. Uh, but what is it that that this team has to do to get to that point? I mean, besides having everybody healthy, which that goes without saying, uh, and I'm not talking about the Penn State game, but a after that. Penn State, they should win the Penn State game. Not that Penn State is the only team to beat Wisconsin, FYI, mm -hmm. uh, the league-leading team, people. But uh, this is a game that Indiana should win. It's not that they're going to win it by 20, but it, it should it should not be as tough as the Iowa game. Iowa had some shooters, man. Um, and, and if Iowa had a post presence, that game would have been, whoo, that would have been scary for Indiana. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, fans don't want to talk about moral victories or anything. Oh, we played well. Like they don't want to hear it at this point. Um, but the only part of that, the good news is I did, I did feel like their fight was much different in that Illinois game compared to other road games. If they can build on that. And I think actually Anthony Little said it in the huddle in the Iowa game. He said, we, we were just here um, this close. Uh, so now we got to find a way to, to, you know, get over the hump as Mike Woodson likes to say as well. So, uh, you know, if they can have that kind of fight, um, but figure out a way to knock down some shots, free throws are still mind boggling how they can't, you know, ever shoot in the seventies or eighties. It seems like for a game. Um, but I, I think they're, they're close. Um, they gotta, gotta find a way to win one of those, uh, to get some confidence. Uh, cause obviously time is running out now that we're in February.